you are seeing the results of Joe Biden being incapable and incompetent and unable to lead this country. And you see that in Virginia, ladies and gentlemen. You may remember a couple of months ago, in November, Virginia was flipped from a state that was all over the edge. This is what I tell people. People from blue states be like, Benny, I'm from a blue state. What can we do? We can't do anything. I'm from Washington or California. You need patriots everywhere. If everyone just abandons their station, then you're not going to ever take back our country. And, ladies and gentlemen, we always need patriots to stand and fight. This nation was built off of patriots that stood and that fought against all odds, that stood and that fought against the British Empire, that stood and that fought against administrative states and authoritarian states and kings and evil dictators and fascistic rulers. And, ladies and gentlemen, we stand and fight now. And, luckily, we are winning. I'm about to take you through exactly what happened in Virginia this weekend, the first executive orders from Governor Glenn Youngkin. Here from Politico, Youngkin's executive orders focus on education and critical race theory. This is a state that was taken back by parents, taken back by patriots. This is a state that gave us the Second Amendment in the first place. This is the state where so many of our genius founding fathers were from, Perhaps the greatest Americans that ever lived, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, these are all men of Virginia. It is so sick what has happened to this state, and so it is wonderful to watch scenes like this. Here is Winsome Sears. Here is Winsome Sears, the first black woman lieutenant governor, a Marine, a, an immigrant to this nation. She and her husband are both Marines. They served our nation. Listen to the hero's welcome that Winsome Sears got when she was welcomed into the inaugural event for the new Republican leadership of Virginia. <laughs> People of Virginia just elected the most diverse leadership in Commonwealth history. <laughs> Sending a message that Virginia is big enough for the hopes and dreams of a diverse people. We stand here today to accept the license to lead and will do so by including all and welcoming all because the future of Virginia belongs to all. Okay, good messaging there. A little bit of pablum, a little bit of just like boilerplate. Uh, he went in a little bit more uh, in this clip. Watch. And to be clear, this spirit of Virginia is not a spirit that is rested in government telling us what is best for us, but rather reflecting the will of the people, defending and protecting. defending and protecting the rights guaranteed by our Constitution and a government and elected leaders going to work every day for we the people. So that wasn't just political boilerplate there. Boy, let me tell you, as soon as Glenn Youngkin was sworn in, executive orders started to rain down from the sky. Now, I'll be the first one to tell you, I'll be the first one to tell you that I am not a fan of ruling by executive fiat. However, what is done by the pen must be undone by the pen. If you live by the sword, then you die by the sword. That is what Jesus Christ said, actually, uh, on the night he was betrayed. And he said that to Peter, and it is true today. What is done by the pen will be undone by the pen. So there were executive orders immediately released. This is what governorship looks like. This is what Republican leadership looks like looks like it's contagious thank god i get the privilege of living in florida and i can experience it every single day but here's what glenn youngkin did and this is a marked change when it comes to white bread mushy like plain oatmeal brand republicanism represented by mitt romney and paul ryan and all of the like all of the like, oh, let's make sure that MSNBC likes us. They'll never like you. The more, you, the quicker you disconnect 
from the idea that corporate media is going to print a nice headline about you, the faster you can get to actually delivering on the desires of the only people who matter in this country, damn it, which is me and you. Glenn Youngkin begins his term as Virginia governor with executive order on critical race theory and promising to restore excellence in education. The order is the first batch of executive actions by the Republican governor signed the day he was inaugurated. As soon as he was inaugurated, he went to the governor's office and he banned critical race theory. That is leadership. Boom. He then banned masks in school, force masking. Masks are allowed in school, you just can't force your students to do it. Incredible, incredible, incredible job. Here we go. Loudoun County, uh, 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 his first order uh, uh, is largely focused on education. He pledged to give parents a say in school mask wearing and teaching of critical race theory. Uh, the Republicans have heavily focused on their bid to take back Congress and state house across the country. Loudoun County, Virginia, has been the forefront of debates about how racial issues are taught in public school. Protests frequently broke out in public school beating, meetings uh, that did turn into public school beatings, actually, eventually, and strong parental sentiment playing a major role in uh, catapulting Youngkin to a win over Terry McAuliffe. I've said this time and time again. Republicans must become the party of the people. We must become the party of the parents. That's it. That is the winning message for Republicans. Because guess what? When you have a kid, suddenly your parties, I mean, parties just these days are just essentially like tribal you know, tribal totems, okay? It is, it is far less about the grand old party. It's why I call myself a member of the new right. It is far more about what you deliver to people. What are the results of your leadership? The results of Democrat leadership is I will steal your child from you. I will inject them. I will mask them. I will take from them all liberty. I believe that your child's future belongs to me. Your child's health belongs to me. Me, the administrative state, the authoritative state. Let me explain to you something very important. I care more about my daughter than you do. You watching this, you, Joe Biden, you, members of Joe Biden's regime. I care more about my daughter and I always will for the rest of my life. I care more about her health. I care more about her education. I care more about her life and the happiness and joy that she will have in her life. Are you a parent? Then you know this feeling. Are you a grandparent? You know this feeling. Are you a young person who wants to have kids? The vast majority of young people who love this country do want to have kids. They do want to start a family. They do want to be happy. It is actually the road to happiness. You will always care more about your child than some administrative bureaucrat hack who is probably childless and atheistic and probably doesn't give a damn about what happens to their future other than they can say it's one more thing that they can control, one more data point inside of an Excel spreadsheet that they can control. And we, as a movement, a freedom movement, are saying no. No. F you, screw off. Our children are ours and we get a say in their education. We get a say in their health. We are the controller and the determinator of what their future will be. Us, the parents, not you, the bureaucrats, the pricks. And this was a direct response to that. Glenn Youngkin immediately banned critical race theory, and he said he's going to start investigating Loudoun County schools for some of the grotesque and disgusting behaviors of the Loudoun County School District. You may remember there was a student who has now been charged uh, and who's now been charged and I think sentenced to lifetime probation in Loudoun County School. This student was, I, I, I don't even really want to go into it on this live because there are rules. I don't want to uh, gross people out. You can look it up yourself. The student was essentially a serial rapist and was going through the, being moved around by the school system into various different classrooms so that he was a serial rapist and this student would then get moved into the next classroom and get moved into the next classroom. Instead of calling the student what, it, what they were and then charging them, the school board covered it up. Okay? This was a huge piece. This broke before the governor's election. Of course, Democrats didn't have anything to say about it. Barack Obama swooped into Virginia and like 
called parents terrorists, right? Department of Justice called parents terrorists for caring about the rape of their children. Sickening. That is what's being offered right now. Two choices in America, right here. Red pill, blue pill. Two choices. Do you want Joe Biden to be in charge of your child? Or do you want to be in charge of your child's future? That's the question. Thank you for watching. We are 100% independent news. Are you sick of being lied to? We certainly are. That's why we started this channel. But we can't do it without you. We can't keep going without your help. All we ask is that you click like and subscribe and share this video. It's free and it keeps us going. It keeps us growing and it keeps us getting the truth out there to break the rotted corporate media infrastructure that wants to lie to you every single day, wants to corrupt your narratives, your truth, your story, and your very society. So support us by clicking like, clicking subscribe, and thank you, patriots.